Ciao Rastafari This is your daughter Mary Lena Ross Dumplin Singing it out for the youth Singing it out for all humanity One heart, one soul, one destiny Roots and culture Roots and culture Culture, culture Roots and culture Teach the children roots and culture so Guy, yeah, great name for the book, um, Dancing My Way Through Life. I have to give everybody a little preview, being your daughter, that my mom always used to say that you should write a book, and she said it should have been Guy's Book of Facts. Now, she unfortunately has been gone a little while, you know, and uh, she wasn't here to help. I'm sure she would have, but maybe the lens might have been different. Tell me about the lens for this book, the title. What, what was the lens in you choosing to write uh, this this time is it is it an autobiography? Would you consider it an autobiography, a biography? Yes, it's an autobiography. I mean, I was the manager of the great Latin band Orlando Marin, who's the last of the Mambo Kings, and I was his manager for forty five years, and I played in his band, danced in front of his band. I I, I didn't know what to do because I loved the music so much. I got to meet. I got to meet friends with all the great band leaders. I was so close, a close friend with the great Tito Puente. He thought I was uh, Larry Harlow, the piano player. And for years he kept asking me, Larry, sit down in my band and play the piano. Come on, join us. And before he died, a year before he died, he said, come on, you got to sit in with me. And I sit down and play the conga drums and he went into shock. He couldn't believe it. What is Larry Hoggle doing playing the conga in the middle of my band? I asked him to sit down at the piano. What is, what the hell is going on? <laughs> That's a great story, funny. So he, you played the conga. Was he thinking that Larry Hoggle was playing the conga or did, did he finally realize, um, Tito, that you were just a, a look-alike He never knew I was Gaetano Ferrari. He thought all his life he said hello to me and stopped by, thought I was Larry Harlow. And my good friend, uh, uh, Sonny, what the heck was his name, Sonny, his uh, godson, uh, said, let's not tell him. Let's keep, let's keep this a secret. Sonny, uh, is it Sonny Rodriguez? I can't even remember all these names. Said, let's not tell him. And till his death day, Tito Puente didn't know the real the Larry Harlow. Larry Harlow. But it was a great story. All right, everybody check out Larry Harlow. Uh, yeah, guy, so. I was also friends with two other great bits. So we're talking about Curtis Field. 1929 to 1933. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the greatest female pilot, Eleanor Smith, flew yeah. here. Amelia Earhart flew here. Jimmy Doolittle, who invented the first blind flight. Frank Hawks kept his plane here, along with Charles Lindbergh at Curtis Field, Valley Stream. Wiley Post kept his plane here. And Guy Ferraro, that's me, promoted this wonderful book that is the most accurate story of the history of Valley Stream. It is the best legacy of the great Valley Stream and the great famous people from show business that entertain here. Like uh, Tommy Dorsey, Jimmy Dorsey got their start here, and Guy Lombardo, and even the greatest entertainer in the world, Al Jolson came to Valley Stream. Incredible place. Valley Stream in the 30s was known for jazz. And they had jazz people come. They were the first town to, uh, to promote black entertainers. As a result, they had, they had the best entertainment. In their two this, night is, clubs. this is my dad. We're at the Valley Stream in two night Pagan clubs. Fletcher Museum, and he's telling us about the great history of Valley Stream. But much, most of the history he's been telling us so far, guy, has really been before your time. So I believe you you moved to Valley Stream around the '60s. So that would have been like about 
30 years after some of these events that you're talking about. So can you give us an idea about how you found Valley Stream? Did you know all this stuff when you came to live here? And uh, and then what happened from... Because from... I love history. My two heroes were Jackie Robinson of the Dodgers and Charles Lindbergh. So on my computer one day, I'm doing research. I, I became a uh, historian and, and very skilled at research. And it said... It said Charles Lindbergh at Valley Stream Airport. I said, where the heck is this place? Nobody in Valley Stream knew about it. None of the three high schools, I, that's a shame. None of the students never heard of Charles Lindbergh. What a shame. I discovered 1980, the great Curtis Field by, by just running around the car and it took me a couple uh, months to find this great airport. When I walked in, I saw six original, gorgeous plane hangars, huge, in great condition. The sliding doors were taken down now so trucks could go in and out during World War II and food for World War II in case of an emergency. What an amazing place. Original Curtis Field Airfield guy, as far as telling us Charles Lindbergh was, storage, was treated was like the greatest uh, airplanes, and greatest Hollywood it was star the original, ever. I guess it would become JFK K Airport. And, Guy, we've talked about this before. Um, what makes, uh, I think we looked at the flight, and more flight takes place currently still over the tri state area in Long Island than in any other place in the world. Any, any feelings about that, why that yes, would be? Yes, because the Ice Age ended in Westchester and, and, and Long Island is flat, ideal for aviation. And that's one of the reasons it became the cradle of aviation because of what they call the Hempstead Plains, which was a five, six mile by six mile flat area. But all of Long Island was uh, completely flat, which uh, saved a lot of money and uh, a lot of airports then uh, became uh, built up in, in this area. Yes, Long Island's the cradle of aviation. And if you want to know the, the latest, most accurate stories, it's in my book, which is All right, we're Dance, gonna... Dancing My Way Through Life by Guy Ferrara, who's now 80 in his 88th year. All right, we're going to ask him for a little bit of information. So the book is on sale right now, you all dancing my way through life. Uh, we were here interviewing about the museum, but we're going to ask him a few questions about the book right now as a follow-up. Beautiful. This is the soft cover selling, I believe, for $16 on many digital platforms right now, digital book platforms. And He's working on getting it out in audio real, real soon, y'all. Enough for the youth. Seen enough for all humanity. One heart, one soul, one destiny.